Deanna? Caitlin. Caitlin, okay, okay. So I'm Gaddy L, we're with the Lions Den Radio Show. So like I was explaining to you all, we're out here delving into some of the issues within the black and brown community, um, current events, issues, things like we have like that in our communities. So the question for you all is, do you all feel like football helps or hurts the black and brown community? I would say it helps. It helps? Okay, what would you say? It helps. It helps? Okay, now why would you all say that? Um, because I think, this mm -hmm. is just my opinion, I mm -hmm. think that the majority of the team is brown, so True. I think it's a sport that a lot of brown kids like to play, mm -hmm. so if it's something like to do, then why not would it be something that would help the community if they are at high school, one of the largest high school in the Correct. state, yeah, yeah. to play. Got you. Okay, okay. You agree? <laughs> Same thing? Okay, okay, okay. So who we got here today? I'm Amari. Amari? Eric. Eric? AJ. AJ. So I got a question for y'all. Y'all play football? Yeah. Play football? Okay. Mm -hmm. What team y'all going for today? Seminole. Seminole? Seminole. Okay, okay. Good, good. Okay, so you all play football as well? Mm -hmm. yeah. You all play football? Okay. Do you guys feel like football helps or hurts the black community in terms of violence? I'll say help. It helps? Why'd you say that? Because like, it gets them stronger. Gets them stronger? Okay, what you what he said? What he said? Same thing? Okay, so you feel like it makes you stronger. So, do you feel like within the black and brown community that football is going to help unite us or it's going to draw us further apart? Help us. Help us? Help. Unite. Okay, okay. So, who we got with us today? Steve Sinley. Steve Sinley. Okay, okay. So, you said you're a football coach, right? Uh, baseball. Yeah. Baseball coach. Okay, okay. What uh, what grades you coach? Uh, I used to coach from the eighth grade or from the eight years old all the way to college. Okay, okay, good, good, good. I brought okay. them up. Got you, got you. I taught them how to be young men. Got you. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Okay, so yeah, with our young men, would you say a lot of our men growing up in the school systems are better off, or do you would, would you say that it's better if they don't get involved in sports? Uh, no. No, they got to be in sports. Okay. It teaches them so much. It teaches them, uh, I mean, there's a whole litany of things I can tell them. Um, it teaches them how to be a teammate, leadership. Uh, it teaches them how to interact with people mm -hmm. in bad times and good times. Um, it teaches them how to handle like, uh, you know, tough times, uh, good times. Uh, I mean, it's just, sports is the only way to go if you want to be a leader. Okay, now, question. So, of course, we know um, the black and brown community, we have some of the highest rates of violence and crime within our neighborhoods. So, one thing that you look at with football, what that does is it kind of incites and it allows violence on uh, one towards another. Because I understand the uniting of a team, but if you look at the other team, they're probably mostly black or brown too as well, right? I have two daughters and they're both mm -hmm. in sports and my son right. is in, um, in the band. Uh -huh. And what I've realized with them being in sports, if they weren't in sports and doing that, mm -hmm. they'd be at home watching TV, YouTube, Good. or just things uh -huh. like that. So for right. me, uh -huh. she spends, what, five hours a day volleyball here at Seminole? Volleyball? And mm -hmm. she's not really happy about that time, but guess what? Got you. Look what her time is. She's spending uh -huh. two games a week. She's got three, four, nine, four days of practice. Right. So to me, uh -huh. it creates a lot of the things. Community, I mean, between, between her knowing people, because she's a very shy person, so she's got, got to know people through uh -huh. her sport. Yep. And if it's football, volleyball, mother one plays soccer, mm -hmm. I mean, between that and, you know, discipline themselves between their schoolwork because uh -huh. you have to you know do your schoolwork still. right correct. so she's learning how to juggle all of that uh -huh. with the hours of that you know so gotcha. to me uh -huh. i prefer to be it doesn't have to be a sport it right. can be anything so whatever sport go. or right. whatever someone wants to be involved in uh -huh. it makes sense like she's thinking about quitting volleyball i'm like well you got to do something yeah yeah you're going right, to sit at right. home and you're going to watch it right. and you're going to watch tiktok yeah. which is nothing against that but mm -hmm. What are you going to do with all those hours? You right. know? So for Agreed. me, you Agreed. need to be involved in something. So who we are at Lions Den Radio, we believe in the Bible. We're a Bible-based movement, okay? So you all believe in the Bible? Yes, sir. You do? You do? Yes, sir. Okay, good, good. So you guys know today is actually God's Sabbath day. You ever heard that before? Never heard that? When do you think the Sabbath day is? Hey, uh, just so you guys know, I used to play in the NFL, whatever. Uh -huh. uh, just so you know. Uh, why guys are pretty cool too. For sure, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love yeah. you guys. And good, I'm good. so excited about what you guys are doing. You guys are awesome. Good, we appreciate keep it. Keep killing it. We appreciate All it, right? sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.
appreciate that. No, I'm serious. No, no, we appreciate it. My best that. friends are uh, friends of mine, so. Good, good. Okay, okay. You a football coach? No. Okay, right. I got no. you. I got you. I don't do that. I don't make any money doing that. <laughs> okay, I got you. Got my you. opinion. So do you feel like leaders can only be bred through sports? No. No? Okay. So would you say that's the only solution for our young youth is to go through sports to be leaders? It's the quickest. The quickest, okay. Yeah. So question, do you believe My in the fault. Bible? Of course. You do? You don't think the Bible can bred leaders quicker than sports can? Uh, I think it's a combined situation. Combined, okay, yeah. okay. It's a combined situation, yeah. Okay, I got you. There's real life situations that you gotta deal with. Mm -hmm. And I Correct. think sports brings that out. Correct. And then of course literature uh, and understanding what God brings you is another you know, good example, but the reality is you got to have uh, you know a big organization of mm -hmm. you know solutions to provide you know leadership to get to that level. What we try and do is show our people that there's other options besides just sports. Long as it's not, it depends on what they're being taught, you know. Mm -hmm. So whether they need mentors or their parenting to saying, hey, mm -hmm. you know, it's you know, it's like anything else. So it, it, it comes from what they're being taught. That, right. You know, me yep. and my husband are really whatever like you know we know that it's a for a lot of people it doesn't be D1. You know, mm -hmm. I have a daughter that wants to do D1, but she might yeah. be doing D2. Right. But guess what? That D2 is still going to put her into school. So right. it's what you're being taught. So if you're mm -hmm. being taught D1 is the only thing you can do. Right. Sports is the only thing you can do. Look uh -huh. at this sport being an open door for right. your school. Good. So you That's have to, good. It really comes from the parenting, mentors, and who they're I around yep. to ingrain that in their head and not just being that. So when it is that way, which I think you probably see that a lot of in that in our community, right. is that yes, that that's it. But mm -hmm. you got to educate people beyond that. Now would you say for our youth, if you look at it, a lot of times they feel like they're only out is sports or entertainment. Do you feel like if that's cut out of their life that they still have a good chance to succeed? I don't think I understand the question. So for example, entertainment, football, basketball, baseball, a lot of our young men want to be rappers, things of that nature. When that's cut out of their life, or they don't make it to the higher level, they feel like there's nothing else for them. So that's why you see a lot of our young men go into the jail system, a lot of them go into gang violence, things like that. So what, what would you say is the solution to that? Because a lot of these young men out here won't make it D1. After this, they won't know what to do. So what do you think would be the solution for And them? I play with all these guys, so I yeah. know. Uh -huh. I can tell you that, uh, I'm to be honest with you, it's an environment, man. Mm -hmm. We don't provide them with a good enough environment. I agree. To make it happen. Right. They're smart kids. Mm -hmm. you know, if you can see, uh, if you have a vision, uh, you're going to strive for that vision. One thing, one key thing that you said that we teach very well is you said they have to have a vision. And the Bible it says without a vision, the people perish. Yeah. So what we try and show our people is, Without the vision that God envisions with us within the Bible, we're not going to be able to prosper in anything that we do as a people. So that's one thing we try and show our young youth, is that there's a solution outside of sports entertainment that they want to get us into, to where if you don't make it in that, your only next step isn't going to be jail or six feet deep. So that's what we try and show our people out of the Bible, that there's solutions that unite us as a people within that. Question two, is, uh, is there father in their life? Yes. Good, that's good. So what we try and show, a lot of times within the black and brown community, obviously, there's broken households, there's single parent households. Would you say that negatively or positively affects the kids? If they just grow up with a mother, no father? Well, I've seen both sides. So uh -huh. my husband did not grow up in the family with a father and I did. Mm -hmm. And so there was a difference. However, he had an amazing mom. Gotcha. And he went down an amazing path. Whereas right. then he has cousins and stuff that did not, mm -hmm. that didn't have that. Um, for me, I grew up in home with my dad. Mm -hmm. um, my kids are going with that. And I mean, it really just, I, I do think a two parent home. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, people say two parent homes, the parents have to be involved. They they do. Sit and they watch do. Games yeah. Home. yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. not my husband, but right. I know parents that do uh, that. Right. So it still comes down to an individual. Two mm -hmm. parents that care and want to create or not create or want to play something in their child's life. Right. Right, right. Just because that, that that dad is at home doesn't mean he's doing anything. Exactly. That's true. <laughs> so yeah, I agree. Whether yeah. you say yes in uh -huh. the home, but uh -huh. also actively in the home, and that's one thing that we decided to do. Uh -huh. Is that you know, fifty fifty. I mean when he ain't there, I'm like, oh my god, there is. I mean, so it still comes down to the individual. Gotcha. So that's a, also, a, to me, something that has to be changed, even if you are single. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, right. my husband's mom did an excellent job. Gotcha. But even with a double home, you know, mm -hmm. okay. they, they got to be involved. We appreciate the support. And look at their eyes, though. 
feet. Yeah. They're like hungry. I hungry. love that. Hungry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Look, That's this good. one here, uh -huh. he is hungry. Look at him. Hungry, yeah. This one's bored. Uh, this one doesn't really do. That one there, he's hungry. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. So, what's your name? Aaron. Aaron, what? Aaron Williams. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. So I'll remember that name forever. Recruiting the next generation. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Okay. So like yeah, like I said, that. you believe in the Bible? Of course. You do? Good, good, good. Okay, so what we try and show our people is, within the Bible, it cre can create some of the same things that sports can. When you talk about unity, when you talk about the discipline like you mentioned, learning how to juggle multiple things, you can all learn that from the Bible. It teaches us Absolutely. those core values. So I got one question for you. So you said within your household it's like 50-50? That's kind of well, how you... Okay. 50-50 okay. for the camera. I got you, I yeah, got you. Yeah, but I really want to be... What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, we got you, Nada. What would you say? What do you think? You can win your dad. Right? You think it's 50-50? You said 50-50 relationship? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. You guys both do stuff, take over. Each other's duties. We both cook, I mean, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. We don't, you know, with this growth in marriage, too. So right. that's a I whole got other you. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's always been like that, but... Mm -hmm. As we've grown in there, we're like, okay, you know, I'm tired, okay, it's not a I got fight. You. I just picked up what you can do. So. Got you, okay, okay. So, how long have you all been married? We've been married 22 years, 22. and we've been together okay, since high school, which is 30 years. Yeah, that's good. Okay, good, good, good. Hey, it's a family that prays together, stays together. Absolutely. So, that's what we try and show within our people is that if you have the Bible in that two parent household, you can really grow strong children and show them how to be men and women according to the Bible. Today is God's Sabbath. Did you all ever heard that before? Never heard that? So when you read in the Bible, God actually says not to do your own pleasure on God's Sabbath day, right? So Friday night, they usually get our youth to play football on Friday nights, right? Now, do you feel like God would be mad at us for doing what he told us not to do? You do? What do you think? Same thing? What you think? Yeah. Yeah? So do you all feel like us playing football on Friday night is a good thing to unite our communities? You do? What if God said that it wasn't? How would you feel about that? You wouldn't know? Because you've been conditioned your whole life to do it, right? You feel like it's okay? Your parents say it's cool? Your parents got you on football? Okay, got you, got you. So we're going to show you one thing that you probably never heard before, okay? You got scripture? Isaiah 58, 13. We're going to show you this. You probably haven't heard it before, but this is something you all can show to your parents, and this is something you can make the choice after today if you still want to do it, okay? All right. So, of course, as you know, which is why you probably said it, in the Bible it doesn't teach 50, 50. But what it does, which is why I wanted to ask your daughter, your children, they see kind of what goes on in the household. So then a lot of times within our young women, they feel like they can be independent because either the father's not there or they see within the household, like the mother really doesn't need the father. Okay. So, and what we try and show our people is, in the Bible, it was always meant to be a marriage with a mother and a father and the children raised up under them. Well, I'll say it like this, a father and a mother. That's how the Bible always ordained it to be. If you're looking for uh, constructive criticism, I would disagree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let those kids flourish. Mm -hmm. uh, they, there's other options for them. Than the Bible? No, no, no. Uh, no, the Bible's great. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. Oh, that's that's what we're about. Don't, don't tell them that. That's the only way to go. Okay. Because they'll find their own solution. Right. It might be a footprint for them. Mm -hmm. But God, you know, gosh, I mean, don't uh, let them think that they can just survive on that. That's going to be the holy grail. No, gotcha. that's not going to happen. Got gotcha. you. Okay, okay. We appreciate that criticism. We appreciate that. It's not criticism, yeah, it's just it's reality. Right. If you're looking for uh, constructive criticism, I would disagree. Mm -hmm. It's not criticism, yeah, it's just it's reality. Right. Yeah, okay. I mean, look at, I mean, look where we're at right now. I mean, you mm -hmm. gotta, like, uh, give the kids an uh, opportunity is where right. it is. Do you know where the origin of sports started? I do not. You do not? Okay, can I ask you something? If I told you it was in the Bible, would you believe me? I believe you. Okay, good, good. I believe everything. Can we you show you one thing? Yeah. Okay, quick. You know what I want. Um, so we're going to show you in the Bible actually where the origin of sports started. Because a lot of our people don't know it, so it's good history to know and why we actually play sports today as a people. Okay. So it's good history. We're going to show it to you. It's the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 4 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Now such now such was the height of the Greek, Greek fashion. So this is the height of the Greekish fashion. Okay. So when you actually look at the, the origins of sports, it all started within the Greek origins. Okay. When you read about the Greco-Roman Empire, that's when it all kind of started. So it says this was the height of it. Read. Okay. 
and increase of the hedonist manners. Uh -huh. Though the seating prof profaneness of uh -huh. Jason, the ungodly rich, uh -huh. and no high priest, uh -huh. verse 14, uh -huh. that the priest had no courage to serve anymore at the altar. Right, so what we're reading about is when the Israelites, we started to separate from our God, and we started to go into heathenish customs. So it's gonna explain the heathenish customs when we read further down. So sorry, verse 15. Verse 15. Uh -huh. Now setting by the honor of their fathers, uh -huh. and but likening the glory of the Grecians best of all. Right, so it says not setting by the honor of our fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. So I got a question for you. Do you know what today actually is according to the Bible? No. It's a Sabbath day. You ever heard the Sabbath before? Are you three seven day Adventists? No, not seven day Adventists. We're the Israelites. Okay. Yeah, you, you may have heard of us before. Okay. So when you read in the Bible, um, the day actually starts when the sun goes down. That's when the day starts. So today is technically Saturday. They say it starts at 12 o'clock, but today actually when the sun went down was Saturday. Okay. So when you read in the Bible, the seventh day, according to the Bible, is the Sabbath day. Okay. So one thing it commands us not to do on the Sabbath day is to have our own delight, our own pleasure on God's Sabbath day. Which, for example, would be football. Because a lot of our men, they're going out there tackling, getting sweaty, everything like that. When on the Bible, we were supposed to rest and honor our God. So that's just one example of how we set away from our customs in the Bible, and we went into Greekish customs, which we learned from the Greeks. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, day, verse 13. Uh -huh. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, uh -huh. from the doing of thy pleasures, uh -huh. on the holy day, uh -huh. all the Sabbath a delight. So you see that? So the Bible says on his Sabbath day, what we do is we do our own pleasure and we call it a delight. But on God's Sabbath day, we were supposed to rest. We're not supposed to be doing work like this on his Sabbath day. You all ever heard that before? So what do you think you should do now knowing that information? You should go home and rest, right? But this is something, like I said, you've been conditioned your whole life to do. It's normal for you. So what you can do, you all can show it to your parents. They may have never heard it before, and then you can make the decision for yourselves, okay? I mean, look where we're at right now. I mean, you gotta like, uh, give the kids an uh, opportunity is what right. it is. To have fun, yeah, enjoy themselves. No, uh, they need to learn. So they need true, to. true, they do, they That's do. That's my thing. We agree with that. I think, yeah. like these kids out here right now. So, these kids are really good. Mm -hmm. Most of these kids in these teams. Mm -hmm. And 95% uh, of them, next year, won't be going to college. Correct. <laughs> Yep. There's 5% of these kids in the field right now that are probably going to get a D1, D2. They're going to get a scholarship mm -hmm. someplace and they're going to have an opportunity. Yep. The rest of them are going to go to community college or mm -hmm. they're going to get a job, you know, you know, digging ditches or whatever. Right. Um, but the reality is, is give these kids an opportunity. And these kids don't have opportunities. So that's true. That's true. Yep. So that's what we are. All we're doing is offering them a different opportunity, a different path that they may not have knew about. So yeah. that's what we're based on. Yeah. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.